So th this is just to give you a little bit of an introduction also to uh, why uh, quite a lot of the research which has been done has focused on uh, the hippocampus. In the, the hippocampus in animals is quite a large area, uh, as you can see. It's really filling up uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, the brain in, in a rodent, as, as in this case. Uh, in humans, it's a small area down here at the basal part of the, the brain, but in most rodents, it's uh, really a huge part of the brain. The reason for that is that in rodents, as in us, uh, the hippocampus and the areas surrounding the hippocampus are really involved in navigation, the ability to find your way, uh, which is important in rats and most anim other animals to be able to find food, remember where the food is and find the food again. Uh, the circuitry in the hippocampus is relatively simple. We're not going to go into it, so it's not important to know any of the details. The most important thing here is that the, re that the circuitry is so simple that it really makes it possible to uh, investigate uh, the communication between the different nerve cells in this circuitry. So it's sort of, you, you have an input, you have some interneuronal uh, communication and you have an output uh, from the hippocampus. And it's all conveniently lying in one layer as this, which means that you can uh, slice uh, through the hippocampus and you can get a very thin slice containing more or less just uh, this circuitry. Uh, and therefore it's possible to investigate what is going on uh, in the uh, hippocampus. Uh, we're going to go back to that uh, on Thursday to investigate the molecular mechanisms going on, but basically uh, what has been found is that uh, when stimulating these different uh, connections in the hippocampus with different frequencies, you can induce long-lasting changes in the efficiency of this circuitry uh, which in many ways seems to be the basis of uh, establishing some of these uh, uh, memory processes. We're going to go back to that. Uh, at the behavioral level though, uh, it's important that uh, the hippocampus is really involved in establishing uh, memory of where things are in the world, basically. So if you use this Morris water maze, which we're going to go back to uh, a couple of times, and put a rat into it uh, and let it swim around for a bit, uh, it will at some point find a hidden platform underneath the water plexiglass so that it can't see it. Uh, if the rat is relatively smart, it will notice that there are some objects surrounding it and using the relative position of those objects, it should be able to remember where the platform is actually located. So after some trials, 10 trials in this case, the rat will swim directly to the platform and uh, get dry feet. Now, if you have a rat with a hippocampus lesion, you have the same thing. To begin with, it swims around. It's quite good at swimming, but it finds the platform. You take it up again, you put it in again, and even after 10 trials, it still spends quite a lot of time swimming around and not being able to find the platform. So hippocampus is involved in doing this. If, if you make lesions of other parts of the brain, you won't see the same effect. Uh, it's also interesting that you can actually, and this is partly Norwegian work, work uh, and uh, so Norwegians are also involved in neuroscience, which is a good thing. Uh, if you record from different parts of uh, the area in the hippocampus and around the hippocampus, you will find that there are cells which change their activity pattern uh, when the rat has learned to find uh, the platform. So this is basically a profile of uh, neurons in the hippocampus and their activity pattern showing that you actually have increased activity uh, corresponding to that precise position uh, in those cells, uh, sort of signaling uh, the memory of that particular place. So what you can imagine is that uh, as the rat is learning new places, there will be new configurations of the neurons, new changes in their uh, activity pattern, uh, which will signal that exact 
position that the uh, rat is now memorizing. This can also be extended to human subjects. Uh, so uh, if we look at subjects who are uh, learning or trying to remember their way through some kind of maze, uh, it's possible to actually see uh, differences in those who are good at doing it and those who are relatively bad at doing it. Many of these experiments are done, for instance, uh, in computer programs where you have to navigate through a virtual reality environment and remember where you found different objects in that virtual reality environment. And it turns out that if you just simply compare the amount of activity that you have in the hippocampus in those who find it quickly and those who not good at finding it quickly, you see much more activity in the hippocampus. And this is where it becomes a little bit difficult, but there are actually differences between sexes with this is concerned. Uh, I'm sorry to have to say this, but uh, around puberty, uh, the hippocampus in men grow a bit more than it does in women, and this correlates quite nicely to a better ability at navigation in men. One of the differences that has been found between brains in men and women, I think women can use it as a good excuse for not being able to find their way. And they're good at so many other things. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, taxi drivers is another example of uh, showing where that, that the hippocampus is quite important for, for the ability of remembering uh, navigation. Uh, this is a quite well-known study where they uh, looked at uh, taxi drivers in London. Uh, and the reason for doing that is that uh, London taxi drivers are quite special, uh, mainly because uh, London is quite a difficult place to uh, drive a cab. Uh, there are so many small streets which are unidirectional, uh, there are lots of uh, changes due to uh, constant uh, road repair, etc. Um, and therefore, if, if you want to become a taxi driver in London, uh, you have to pass an examination. Uh, and this examination you're not allowed to take until you have uh, practiced for more than two years uh, in order to uh, learn the different streets in London. Uh, the examination is purely theoretical, so it's not a practical test. Uh, it's, so you're put in front of a green cloth, uh, basically, and uh, you will get sort of uh, two addresses in London, and then you're supposed immediately to be able to explain how to get from one address to the other in the cheapest and quickest way, taking into account all the different uh, unidirectional uh, roads that's, uh, that are in, uh, in London. Uh, this, this is really difficult, uh, but if you manage, you can become a taxi driver. So uh, what they simply did in this study was to uh, study the brain of taxi drivers and control subjects, and what they saw was that uh, the hippocampus and especially the posterior part of the hippocampus uh, was here on the left side and on the right side was actually bigger in uh, the taxi drivers whereas the anterior part was smaller. Uh, so, and especially the posterior part of uh, the hippocampus in human subjects uh, and in monkeys has been shown to be mainly involved in navigation. Uh, so it sort of fits that uh, this is uh, where things are happening. What they also did in this study was to uh, see what part of uh, the hippocampus is actually being active in taxi drivers uh, when, not when they're driving, but when they're lying in a scanner and looking at video images of a car driving either through London or in the countryside. And it turns out that only when they're shown video images from London, do they have activity in the posterior part of uh, the dorsal part of the uh, uh, hippocampus. If you put up a camera 
in London and just show the traffic going by. There's no activity. It's only if you put it inside a taxi and you drive around in London and show different... It's sort of that the brain starts saying, OK, next time we have to go left, next time we have to go right, uh, and uh, therefore they get this activity. What was also quite clear was that uh, the more you had been a taxi driver, this is the amount of uh, number of months uh, that people had been taxi drivers, the bigger your hippocampus. Uh, so spend more time as a taxi driver in uh, London and you will get a larger hippocampus. Quite interesting.